Hello and welcome back to MacMerlin. Today I've got the KBP V60 for all of you. The KBP V60 first came out in 2014, which is coincidentally around the same time that I first joined the community. Back then you only had like the Ducky Mini, the Poker, and this keyboard for 60% choices. Today it hasn't really changed much. To learn more, stay tuned till after the break. First of all, thank you very much to KBP for sending me a whole slew of V60 keyboards. For all of you out there, don't worry, I'll still give my honest opinion. The batch sent to me all have some variant of ALP switch, but you'll still be able to find these boards with Cherry or Gateron switches. For those of you who watched my previous video, the KBP V60 Type R, this is a different PCB. There is no full programmability. The keyboard comes in a small box that reminds me of a shipping box actually. It's got the logo emblazoned on with the difference in keyboards affixed with stickers on the left and on the right. When you open it up, you've got your keyboard wrapped in protective foam, USB cable, key puller, and miscellaneous keys to use for your preferred layouts. The case is made of plastic. And with many of the tray mount 60% plastic cases, there is some flex. Fortunately, don't compare this to the cheap 60% cases you can buy for under 20 bucks. This is a lot more stable when typing. Those other cases tend to wobble as you type. Another difference is the way it's shaped. It's angled at the back and the weight seems to be supported on the left and right of the keyboard. Looking at the USB cutout, you can see that it's shaped like the USB port. I really like this as it adds additional stability to the USB port. The case is also supported by four rubber feet to prevent it from slipping and an opening for the dip switch. Some boards you see out there literally just have a hole in which you can see the dip switch and even touch the PCB. Like the USB port, the case is form fitted to the dip switch. This is an excellent idea. This is the issue that I have with this case. If you ever need to take your keyboard apart, you need to peel some of the rubber feet away. If you do this often, you'll soon have to replace said feet. But Merlin, no problem. I'll just buy one of those fancy aluminum cases. Wrong. As far as I know, there are no cases out there that support a hole as big as this dip switch. So yeah, I guess you're stuck with this case. Therefore, there's no real need to take it apart. Looking at the provided manual, you've got a total of three function layers. The base QWERTY layout, the FN layer, and a dedicated arrow layer that you can toggle to by hitting FN and enter. When you do this, you'll see an LED light up. I'm going to say that this is probably one of my favorite features of any 60% mass produced keyboard. I barely use my bottom right modifier key, so having arrows there is a godsend. There are no lighting options on this keyboard, so naturally you don't have any keys to modify that. The KBP V60 also provides dip switch options. You can change the functionality of your caps lock key to FN or control. You can change your control key to FN or tab. You can change your tilde to escape, change the positioning of your alt and win keys. And of course, you can change the position of your FN key. Refer to the manual for more details. The keyboard has a standard layout. At this point, I usually comment that most keycap sets will fit just fine. But since all the keyboards I'm reviewing today are ALPS based, it might not really matter. I guess the only aftermarket sets you can purchase readily right now are from Taihao, so those will work. Anyway, the keycaps provided kind of suck. There are super thin ABS OEM profiles. They're not even double shot. This is one of the biggest drawbacks of choosing an ALPS based board. You're gonna have a ridiculously hard time finding keycaps that are good quality and that will fit your layout. So good luck. I'm going to be covering quite a few switches in this review, but they are all ALPS variants. Don't get me wrong. None of these keyboards have complicated ALPS. Quick history lesson here, all from Death Authority.
Complicated Alps were first introduced in the early 1980s. They came in two variants, the SKCL for linears and the SKCM for tactiles and clickies. They were called complicated primarily because they were, they had 11 different pieces in them. By around the mid to late 90s, this design started to get simplified. The variants were then called SKBL and SKBM. In my opinion, the SKBM are a lot more wobbly and rattly than their complicated counterparts. In 2000, Alps Electric ended their 30 year partnership with the Taiwanese company Forward Electronics. Until the product was discontinued in 2012, it was called Fuka Switches. Funny thing is, it was a misreading of the actual Mandarin name, which is Fu Hua. But since there's already an English translation, Forward Electronics, why didn't they just go with that? Anyway, with Alps slowly fading into the annals of history, a Canadian company named Matthias stepped out and started making their own clones. Unfortunately, these clones were once again based off of the simplified designs. The rattly nature of simplified Alps is supposedly removed and the housing is transparent for LED lighting. Like Cherry MX, Alps has been cloned plenty of times. One particular switch was popularized by Philco and Ducky. This was called the XM switch, which stands for Xiangmin. The product name, however, was KSBC, N, or LE. I'll talk more about the KSBC later. Alright guys, let's just take a look at some of the boards here. These are the XM, or KSBC switches. That's actually supposed to be an ivory slider, not white. Okay, so let's backtrack a bit. If you've watched my channel enough, you know that I hate clicky switches and I'm somewhat annoyed that almost all the keyboards they sent are clicky switches. My impression of the Fuka switches, not bad. They actually kind of sound like Blue Alps. They're, they click for sure, but they're not so high pitched. Next keyboard, it's the Matthias Click. So I don't know what the deal is with the Matthias switches, but it is extremely hard to pull keycaps off. I've owned other Matthias boards in the past and on more than one occasion. While pulling out the keycap, I ripped a few switches out. Next up, the KBP Matthias Quiet Click. Short story, this was actually the very first 60% that I bought. I used it for about a week at work. Um, I loved how the switches felt, but the whole combination of a plastic case and quiet switches kind of made the overall feel feel really cheap. To be honest, the whole reason why I wanted a 60% was because I got to play with the Duck Viper. I know, I know, it, it's not a fair comparison and probably skewed my thoughts and opinions about the Matthias. And now this is their newest switch. It's actually not a KBP switch or a Matthias switch, but it's a switch made by Datacomp. These are the Datacomp Browns. Keep in mind, this is still based off of the simplified Alps designs. So for those of you fortunate to own a keyboard with SKCM Browns, don't expect it to be any way similar. In fact, as I'm typing on it, it feels similar to what the Matthias Quiet Clicks would feel if they didn't have dampeners. In terms of tactility, they have that Alps tactile feel, but it's not as large as the Matthias Quiet Clicks. I'd even say it's not as tactile as the SKBM Blacks. It also has a lot of ping, which annoys me a lot. Still, it's not as noticeable as other keyboards I've reviewed, but nonetheless, it seems that it suffers the same issues as its SKBM brethren. What I have here is my perceived ranking of Alps switches. All these switches I actually do own, so it's not like I'm at a meetup trying different switches for a few seconds each. As mentioned earlier, I hate clicky switches. So I pretty much rank these based on how high pitched or loud the click is. Things to note are that the SKCM white seemed only minutely louder than the XM. For those who have only tried MX Blues, those are still louder, but the MTS-C comes pretty close. I'm more of a tactile lover, 
So I do have more experience with tactile Alps. I've ranked these in terms of perceived tactility. At the top, you got the coveted SKC and Browns. However, in this list, my favorites are actually the SKCM Orange and the MTS-Q. If the Browns were lighter, they'd be my favorite. Unfortunately, these new data comp Browns are at the bottom of the list. I'd argue that some of the custom switches such as Zelios or the Panda Zelio or Panda Halo Hybrid are more tactile than the Browns. You'd only be buying these if you wanted something more tactile than MX Browns, but didn't want to spend the money or time to building a custom board with those particular batik switches. For those wondering how these compare with MX switches, in general, Alps are inherently more tactile due to the metal tactile leaf. A typical MX switch has the tactility based on the shape of the plastic stem. This tactile leaf provides different degrees of tactility, such as the case with SKCM browns and oranges. If you want to know more about Alps, please check out Reddit, Deathority, or Geekhack. There's a wealth of information there, much more than my 10 or so minutes can provide. Overall, the KBP V60 is a good keyboard. It's cheap at $109, I believe, on mechanicalkeyboards.com, but if you don't care about Alps and you like cherry switches, I would highly recommend going for their Type R just because it's fully programmable and it's only $10 more. Well, at least it's $10 more today. It could go up higher. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review and learned a little bit more about Alps. If you like what you saw here today, make sure you give this video a thumbs up by hitting that like button and stay tuned for more. I'll see you all next time.